Hello, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering the theory of Python. And this is Boolean operators in algebra. So we're going to go over the Python operators really quick, how they work. We're going to talk about short circuiting. Then we're going to try to cover as much of Boolean algebra as you should know in order to make your life easier as a program. So first, the Boolean operators. We have the Boolean operators not. We have or, A, or, B. And we have and, A and B. So A and B are just expressions, right? And so what not does is if, so not A will give you true if A is false or any of those false values, none or zero or any one of those things. And it will give you false if A is a true value which is anything but none and zero and empty sequences and stuff like that, okay? Pretty simple, not just basically inverts. And then A or B, A and B, right? Uh, let's draw, let's, let's talk a little bit about short circuiting first. So we, there's this phenomenon in computer science called short circuiting. And what Python is doing is evaluating left to right, okay? So when it evaluates the or statement, for instance. Now, if A or B, if either A or B is true, then the entire thing is true, right? So if A is true and B is false, or if A is false and B is true, or if they're both true, it's, this whole thing is gonna be true. What Python actually does, though, for A or B, right, is, let's draw a little truth table here to kind of describe what this, what, what's happening. So we have uh, A is false, A is true, B is false, and B is true. Okay, so if A is false, then this OR statement could be true or false, right? So it's then gonna evaluate B and return whatever B is, right? If A is true, then this entire thing is gonna be true, so it doesn't even bother evaluating B, right? So B is not even evaluated. So it short circuits, it does only A, it doesn't even do B because it knows that since A is true, it's pointless to go on and evaluate anything else, right? And the same kind of phenomenon for AND, okay? So let's kind of draw what that looks like. So we have A is false, A is true, B is false, and B is true, okay? So if A is false in the AND statement, then this can never be true. It's always gonna be false. And so it will always give you back what A is and if A is true in the AND statement, then it'll give you back what B would be. Okay, so in this case, the if A is false, it doesn't even evaluate the expression B. I'm sorry, let me slide that up there so you can see the bottom. Okay, and this gives you a sort of poor man's uh, if statement, right? So this is, this is a branching logic that you can apply to your program. And typically where you see it is in case of or, we might have a default. So we might have some value X that is going to be A, but if A is none or zero or something like that, we're gonna set it to some default and say the default is three, right? And so you typically see something like this in Python code, not very often, but every once in a while. And for the and, what you might see is you have some function that you're calling and some other function you're calling. And what this will do is if this function returns false or none, then this function is never called and executed, right? I, I encourage you to use if statements if you can, but sometimes these shorthands are really useful and very nice to have. Okay, well, let's talk now about Boolean algebra. Okay, so in Boolean algebra, there are only two numbers, zero and one. So in Python, one is considered true and zero is considered false, right? So true is actually the number one. False is actually the number zero. Let me slide that over there. Okay, so zero and one are the only numbers. Okay, so we have unary operators. And if we draw a table, so we have, let's draw a little table here. Okay, so if we have a zero or a one, right? So if we take, let's say we have the operator x. So x zero and x one, okay? So the possibilities are that there's actually four possibilities here. Let's list them all out. Okay, the possibility is that it always gives you zero, it gives you the same numbers back, it gives you different numbers back, or it always gives you one, okay? So these two operators, if the unary operators would just be trivially zero or one, right? They're kind of useless. This one would be called the identity operator. It does nothing, it's the same as, you know, plus in basic algebra. And this one would be not. So not basically inverts the value, okay? The binary operators, there's a lot more of these. Let's draw a table. Let's see how I can do this. 
So we're going to have two values, A and some operator B. So we're going to have 0 and 0, 0 and 1, 1 and 0, and then 1 and 1. We're going to have 16 possible outcomes. So the first outcome is all zeros. The second outcome is everything but the last one. And let's just kind of count up in binary to get all the possibilities here. 1, oh, 0, 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and then 1, 1, 1, 0, and finally 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, hopefully you can see all that. If you can't, that's okay. So let's go through what these operators would do. So this operator always returns zero. It's kind of pointless, it's stupid. We'll just call it the zero operator. And this one down here always returns one. So we'll just call it the one operator. It doesn't do anything very useful. Just like the unary operators, these are not very interesting. This one we know is and. So it's always giving you a zero, except when they're both true. And so we're gonna call this the and operator. And then down here, we have the inverse of that. So we have not and down here. Sometimes it's called nand, okay? Let's look for some other interesting ones. So this one here is or, right? So if they're both false, it's zero. If either one of them is true, it's true. And this one would be not or, or sometimes called nor, okay? Well, let's see if we can find some other interesting ones. Uh, here we have, this is called x or, or we might think of it as not equals. So it's true if they do not equal each other. Okay, and then on the, uh, 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 the opposite side, we have not XOR or equals, right? So it tests to see if the two sides are equal, okay? Let's see what else we can find. So here we have, this is just returning to you the A, the left side. Okay, so it's 0, 0, 1, 1. And then we have not A down here, 1, 1, 0, 0. And then we're going to do B is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1. This is B. And the 1, 0, 1, 0 is not B. And then finally, we have 4 left over. Okay, So this one we're going to call this one is going to be A implies B. Okay, This is going to be true if A is false. And otherwise, if A is true, then it's going to give you back B. Okay, And this one here is B implies A. And then we're going to have the knots up here as well. So the inverse of these guys. OK. Now, of these, you can reconstruct all of these using only not, and, and or. So the, these guys and not, these three operators are everything you need to do to do all of Boolean algebra. Okay, let's talk about some of the identities and rules in Boolean algebra. So here are some of the rules, uh, at least the ones that I like to use, the ones that are interesting. So first rule is or is comparable to addition, except 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 and and is comparable to multiplication, okay? So we have associative, let's do some identities here. Let's do this one. So a or zero is always just gonna give you a. a and one always gives you a back as well. So oring by zero or ending by one just does nothing. So you don't even bother doing it. Um, you also have a or a is equal to a, and a and a is equal to a. So if you're anding or oring something that's the same, uh, don't bother you're wasting your time. Okay? We have a or not a. This is always true. Okay? And we have a and not a is always equal to false. Okay? So if you're anding or oring with the opposite, you know what the answer is going to be. No, don't bother doing that. And uh, associativity, so we have A or B or C is the same as A or B or C. And the same works for AND, A and B and C is the same as A and B and C, okay? And in Python, we're gonna evaluate left to right and we're gonna do short circuiting, so um, we don't, typically we don't bother with the parentheses here. We just write it out as a, as a left to right, okay? Uh, we have commutativity. So A and B 
is the same as B and A. And we have A or B is the same as B or A. Okay, so if you have a choice and you know which one's more likely to cause short circuiting, you should choose that version, okay, to allow the program to run just slightly faster, okay? Uh, what else do we have? We have, um, oh, absorption. This one's kind of cool. I, I haven't really seen this too often, but you have A and A or B. This is always going to give you back A. And you can figure out why using the distribution rules. And then we have A or A and B is also going to give you back A. So it basically absorbs B. It doesn't do it very often. It doesn't do anything with B. So you can just drop the B. And finally, I wanted to talk about De Morgan's. This is one that actually arises quite often. Okay, what De Morgan says is that if you have not A and B, that's the same as not A or not B. And if you have not A or B, that's the same as not A and not B, okay? If you read this out with some conditions, right? So for instance, let's say it's raining and it's Thursday, right? A is it's raining, B is it's Thursday. So if it's not raining and Thursday, that means either it's not raining or it's not Thursday right? And on the other hand, if it's not raining or Thursday, that means it is not raining and it is not Thursday, right? So that's the way to think of that. Anyway, these are fairly simple operations. Um, let's make sure I covered them all. And I think I have covered them all. Did I do the identities? Yes, identities. I did them with selves. I did them with the knots. I did them with the uh, associativity. I did distributed uh, commutivity, and we also did that one as well. Okay, I did forget two of them. They're rather trivial. The first one is A or 1 is always equal to 1, and A and 0 is always equal to 0. That should be fairly obvious. And also distributed distributivity. This works like this. So A and B or C is the same as A and B or A and C, right? That's pretty much to be expected. That comes from, that's in regular algebra as well. But this one is not expected. A or B and C is A or B and A or C, right? So it works for both and and or for distributed, distributivity, uh, distributivity. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is basically everything you need to know about Boolean algebra, Boolean operators. One more tip, actually, one more tip before we go. Let's talk about truth tables. So sometimes you're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what operations I need to do. What you can always do is draw a truth table. So this is how you do it, draw a truth table, right? And what you do is you have your conditions up here and then you basically fill in all the possible combinations. In this case, we have three, so we should have eight. One, zero, one, two, three, eight of them, basically. And, and you just go through. You say, what if they're all false? What if only C is true? What if only B is true? What if B and C is true? You just go down the list there. And then over here, you figure out what the answer should be, right? So you say, well, when everything's not true, it's not true. When C is true, it is true. When B is true, it's true. But if they're both true, then it's not supposed to be true, okay? And doing an analysis here, you can break this down and figure out what the relationships is, what the relationships are between these three expressions. You can write out a simplified form of the um, operators you'll need to do. I'm not gonna do that for different problems you have, but if you do have a particularly convexing one, one that's causing you a, a lot of problems, uh, go ahead in the comments below, let me know what it is, and we can talk about how to solve that particular problem in a video or just in the comments there. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this, take care, and bye-bye. This video is part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.